After making my recent Jabba's Palace roll call video about a mana man, I decided to look for 3D models based on the character and see if there was anything out there. And I was happy to see that on cults.com, the user Desert Octopus was selling 3D models of a variety of vintage action figures. And as you can see, quite a few of those are Kenner Star Wars figures from Return of the Jedi and earlier to... And, of course, one of those was a man -a man himself, which we're going to be looking at in the video today. The models cost around $4 a piece, so they're not super expensive. And the quality seems to be relatively high. If you look at the actual 3D model itself, you can see it's got a fair amount of detail. And it's not as much as the actual vintage figure itself, if you were to do a side-by-side -side comparison. But I think reasonably good. I think this is most likely done from some sort of a 3D scan. That's then been cleaned up, and I think these new pegs and peg holes have been added to allow you to print it off and then assemble it as a figure. And here is the model printed off on my new Elegu Mars resin 3D printer. I used the ABS-like resin that I mentioned in my last video, which should make it uh, less brittle and more strong, which is definitely a quality we want for uh, an action figure that you're going to be assembling out of parts like this. After I printed it, I cured it in my new makeshift curing chamber that I made out of a cardboard box and some aluminum foil, and also, of course, uh, a UV lamp. And here we have the pieces all cured and slightly cleaned up. I printed all of them solid instead of hollowing them out, since there didn't seem to be much to hollow out, except for maybe the body, but then I didn't really want to have to make drainage holes in the body. And, you know, it didn't really seem necessary. Uh, as you can see, it came out quite well, I think, and the pegs look like they should be functional, but I have not, until this very moment, actually tried them out, so let's give it a shot. I'm half expecting this to just shatter, but no, it actually seems to be working, and it even maintains its position a little bit there. That's kind of impressive. So we'll go ahead and put the other limbs on and uh, see how it works. Yep, this actually does seem like it could work. Uh, now, to be clear, I don't think these would make actual action figures. You know, you wouldn't want to give these to a kid to play with because I'm sure they would break in short order. But as something that you just want to, you know, have on display or whatever, it seems like you could really resin print this kind of uh, vintage figure. You know, the kind of figure that has just four points of articulation or five could definitely work and if you take a look at the two of them side by side yeah it's actually kind of impressive isn't it why don't we go ahead and try and paint this guy up when i paint models i like to use some kind of a primer often that's a spray primer but i only have gray primer at the moment and i'm afraid that might be hard to cover with the yellow paint so i decided to just cover the whole thing with white paint first of all as i said that'll help cover up the gray even of the resin beneath it and it'll also give the paint that i'm putting on something to stick to i'm going to try and mix the paint as close to the vintage color as i can but it's going to be hard to get it exact here i'm just going to mix up a couple of shades of green and hopefully that will be close enough one thing you should know about painting is that it is an additive process that takes time your first coat is always going to look like crap Probably the first couple three coats will look bad too. Uh, but you know, once you start to get a few of them on, you'll get some decent coverage and then you can start to work on getting the details. If you look at the vintage figure, you can see it's basically a two-tone paint job with a little bit of green teeth, I guess you'd call them, that go up into the yellow. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna, first of all, clean this white part up because I really want a white undercoat for the yellow. And we can start to apply the yellow once the white has dried. And, you know, this looks pretty terrible at this stage, but we're just sort of roughing it in at this point. Those of you who are familiar with the vintage figure may be yelling at your screen by now that I have messed up the paint on the arms, and that is entirely true. I reversed the color scheme. It should be green on the bottom, yellow on the top. So I'm going to have to fix that. First, I'll have to repaint it over with white just so it'll cover properly. And then I will... Just redo the paint on the arms. Sometimes this kind of thing happens, you know, it's not worth stressing about. And here we finally have the correct two-tone paint job, a very, very rough one. You can see that the uh, lines there between the colors are quite rough still, but we're not going to worry about that yet. We're going to look at the original figure here and just kind of get a feel for 
what the pattern looked like. I'm not going to try and duplicate it exactly. I don't really think that's probably worth doing and it would be quite difficult. This isn't the kind of thing you have to get right the first time. You can sort of rough it in and then come back with the yellow to kind of refine the line a little bit, which is what I'm going to be doing. And I'll switch to a finer tipped brush here, as you see. So it's just a matter of kind of going back over several times and trying to make it look somewhat clean. It's not going to ever look as good as the factory paint job probably, but at least from a distance, it should be passable. Red is the only other color in use on this figure for the eyes. And I think the eyes are pretty important for making the overall look correct. And if we compare the two, I'd say it's not a bad match. The color of the uh, green and the yellow are not exactly correct. And in fact, I decided to go back and do a very, very subtle highlight on the yellow, partially to try and match the color a little bit better and also to bring out some of the details a little bit better too because the uh, wrinkles and other details and things are not quite as deep on the 3D printed figure as they are on the actual plastic figure. And here we have the two side by side just as we saw in the thumbnail for this video. And yeah, I mean, it's not as though you can't tell which is 3D printed, but they are pretty close, aren't they? Until you get closer up, that is, and you can see that the original Vintage figure has quite a bit more detail in the neck there and on the face than on the 3D printed version. But I think if you just wanted to print something to have on display because you didn't want to spend well over $100 to get one of these figures, I think that's definitely possible. It could definitely work. It does function as an action figure, as you can see, although the limbs are a little bit floppy in places. It is certainly articulated. It doesn't come with the staff, unfortunately. There was no model for that. But, uh, you know, I think this was definitely a successful experiment. Of course, you don't have to be limited to just recreating the vintage figure exactly as it was. Uh, 3D printing lets you make things bigger or smaller. So I decided to make this teeny tiny little Amana Man. I thought it turned out rather well. This is the same model, just printed out at 50% scale. And, you know, you can see all the details are still there. Unfortunately, the joints no longer function, so I had to just glue them in place. I couldn't get the pegs to fit in the holes, and I did try to adjust them a little bit, but it just didn't seem to work. That can be an issue when you're adjusting the size of things. Speaking of which, I decided to also go bigger and print one off at 12-inch scale, or 1 -sixth scale. And we can't even fit it in the frame, it's so big. This one, of course, I had to do on my traditional FDM 3D printer, the uh, Creality CR-10S4. I printed this in 3D Solutech Silver PLA at 0.2 millimeter layer height, which isn't the finest you can get, but it's probably the finest I would want to use for something this large. It still took about 48 hours to print, I think. And I think it came out pretty well, considering that it's uh, just printed with normal filament, but it is a little bit on the rough side compared to the resin prints, as you can see if you look a little closer. I also am not sure if this 3D model is quite detailed enough to be blown up to this size. You can see the layer lines and a few of the imperfections in the print if you look closely. And the thing is, if I wanted to finish this and paint it and do it up well, I would have to spray it with filler primer, do some other uh, maybe putty and stuff like that to make it smooth and sand it all over and then finally do the painting and I just didn't think it was probably worth it given that it didn't have the level of detail that I really wanted for this size but I did want to print it out and see how it turned out. I did have to glue the arms and legs to the figure though because the pegs didn't function as they were supposed to. So what are your thoughts about this uh, experiment of mine? Do you think it's worth trying to print a rare and expensive vintage figure, for example. In case anyone out there is concerned, there's no way you could possibly confuse the 3D printed version for the actual vintage figure, so I don't think there's any way that this could get onto the market and, you know, be sold as a an actual Amana Man figure. It's really just something that you can do for, you know, filling out a gap in your display or maybe for having fun and printing it off at different sizes or things like that. So I did try and reach out to the designer of this to see if he was going to make a vintage Java figure. I'd really like to have a 3D model of that, but I haven't heard anything back. If anybody does know where I could get a model of that made, I'd be very interested in 
looking into that. In any case, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little experiment of mine, and thanks very much for watching.